So at this current moment, I'm working on a billion Mandy iceberg, and also a three to four hour video about the history of Toonami. But those videos are on the back burner today because right now, I want to talk about what is possibly the scariest episode of Adventure Time ever. So it should be pretty apparent that I have been super invested in Adventure Time lately. I mean, I just released an hour and a half long iceberg about the show. I mean, I haven't seen the series in a few years, and I just had this strong urge to go back and binge the series again. And while rewatching the series for my iceberg video, I discovered an episode that I had legitimately never seen before during my teenage years. That might come as a shock to some of you because literally everyone and their stepfather has probably heard of and has seen this episode before. But I promise you, I haven't. I don't remember this episode from my teens, and so when I first checked it out, I, uh, uh, well, well, let's just say that I couldn't look at a deer the same way. If you couldn't tell by the thumbnail of the video, that episode in particular was No One Could Hear You, or the infamous deer episode, and it was terrifying to say the least. In fact, I think almost everyone who is either a diehard fan of the series, or just a casual viewer, can collectively agree that No One Could Hear You is borderline f creepy. You know, Adventure Time is known for having its strange, hell, even downright morbid moments, but No One Could Hear You was so scary that I, well, number one, Pissed my socks and shirt, don't ask me how that's possible. And two, instantly knew that I had to cover the episode exclusively for a video. Now just a heads up, this isn't going to be like a super deep dive into the episode or anything like that. I basically just want to run through the plot with you guys and just talk about what the hell this episode even is and why I love it. I have another episode or two that I would like to cover in the future, so if you guys really enjoy this video and want me to make more Adventure Time episode breakdowns, like a mini-series of sorts, then just let me know in the comments. So, no one could hear you. It's the 15th episode of Season 3, it aired on November 14th, 2011, was written and storyboarded by Akko, this last name on screen, and Jesse Moynihan. And the synopsis reads, Finn and Jake stop an unearthly stag when Finn finds that his legs are broken, Jake has gone crazy, and all of the candy people are missing, the stag being the deer. So without further ado, let's run through this wacky plot. So the episode begins by introducing a deer that is shown licking starchy excessively. Jesus Christ. Finn and Jake notice the unusual behavior and chase after the deer. While they manage to catch up to it, Jake falls off during the pursuit and lands on his head, injuring himself, and Finn is shown getting his legs smashed, <laughs> oh my god, and then thrown into a nearby house. We're already off to a great start, everybody. As it turns out, Finn was knocked unconscious by the deer, or maybe the house, and woke up in a hospital. I, I hope that house has insurance, by the way. As Finn looks around and calls out for Jake, PB, and Dr. Ice Cream and everybody else, he realizes that no one is around to answer. Finn then becomes aware of the casts on his legs and recollects how they were injured by the deer. I think it's very important to note that we're only one minute into the episode at this stage, and believe me, if you haven't watched No One Could Hear You before, it only gets more and more bizarre from here. After leaving the hospital and venturing out onto the street via a wheelchair, Finn hears a sound and spots a can being hurled from behind a house. Upon investigation, he discovers Jake rummaging through some trash while dressed in a black cape and head wrap. Finn inquires about the whereabouts of everyone and Jake reveals that the candy people are avoiding him because it's his birthday. Spoiler alert, it's nobody's birthday. He suspects that Lady Ranicorn had arranged a surprise celebration for him, and the only means of bringing everyone back is by making the Candy Kingdom think that they are genuinely surprised about the party, which somehow Finn believes. The boys then gather a heap of garbage in a shopping cart and make their way to Jake's tent. I lied, it was just Christmas lights, which is pitched in like the center of the Candy Kingdom. There, Jake asks Finn to fetch some firewood to start a, and I quote, Hobo fire. And while scavenging for wood, Finn realizes that he smells like total ass and decides to take a shower in a fountain. B bro, why are you taking a shower with an uncovered cast? That's like microwaving a fork. I, gu I guess if you want to be technical, that's not really the same thing because one is just kind of weird and the other one is just downright dangerous. Anyway, at this current moment, Finn believes that he was unconscious for only a few days, which May be a possibility, but we'll talk about that later. 
Back at the fire, Finn begins to question Jake's theory about the surprise party and wonders if the candy people are just in trouble since it's been a full day and nobody has appeared yet. Jake then inflates like a fake boob and tells Finn to not snoop around the Candy Kingdom or talk about the party because he doesn't want the surprise to be ruined. Jake then grabs his head in pain and heads to bed. Oh look at that! It's the deer! So that little bastard decided to show his face again. Finn scolds the deer for breaking his legs, which you know, I would do the same thing if a deer broke my legs, to which the deer replies with a crotch lick. <laughs> Finn then begins to hear voices coming from a sewer nearby, and he suspects that the voices are the candy people. So he waddles over to Jake and starts poking him with a stick, you know, like that dude from that one meme. You know the meme? You know what I'm talking about. Finn warns Jake about the voices in the sewer, to which Jake basically blows off his statement. Finn becomes frustrated and tells Jake that he's been waiting all day for the surprise to happen, and Jake tells him that he's been waiting for six months which just blows Finn away. Bugs are also crawling out of Jake's ear, and wow, this is just really freaky. Hey, look, it's uh, it's, it's Man Man from, from that movie, Man Man. <laughs> Finn's internal dialogue states that he's lost his best friend, which is really sad. Finn speeds towards the sewer with lightning fast speed, or as fast as lightning can go if it was trapped in a cast, but his progress is halted by Jake, who restrains him and proceeds to play with puppets. And to add to the uh, bizarre nature of this entire scene, Jake's feet are tied to cinder blocks in order to keep him grounded because of the balloons on his back. And uh, by the way, Jake has balloons on his back. It's, it's pretty abundantly clear, based on the numerous contextual clues throughout the episode, that Jake is delusional because of his head injury from before. He's loopy, kind of like an old man. I'm not saying that all old men are loopy, I'm just saying I've met a few. Previously, I mentioned that Finn could have been in a coma for just a few days, and then I told you that Jake mentioned him being in a coma for six months. Well, it's kind of worth noting that even though Jake said that he's been waiting six months, it literally could have been a few days. You know, because Jake bonked his head and is crazy now. He could have just made the six months up, or maybe he meant six months in magical dog years, which, again, I think is like a day or two, maybe three max. It's honestly up for interpretation, which I really like. So Finn convinces Jake to untie him to let him be a part of the puppet party. When the opportunity arrives, Finn runs or waddles as quickly as possible to the sewer entrance. No, wait, wait, he runs. Wait, if Finn was in a coma for six months, wouldn't he have, like, atrophied legs? Like, I'm not a real doctor, but I'm guessing legs can totally heal well before six months. But not using the leg muscles for so long could result in atrophied legs. Or I guess it would just be called atrophied muscles. Either way. When my jaw was busted almost two years ago, by the way, my jaw was busted two years ago for any new viewers watching this, I had no way to move a lot of the muscles in my face for two months, because my jaw was closed up using wires and arch bars. So finally, when it came time to remove the arch bars and the other little trinkets in my mouth, I could barely open, close, or eat anything crazy using my mouth for a few weeks after because I had to build up that muscle again. I can't imagine not using your legs for six months and then trying to, like, run. Like, that just doesn't sound fun. Then again, Finn just heals quicker than a lot of people, and I just realized that this is just a cartoon and I'm digging way too deep into this. <laughs> it's fun to talk about this stuff, though. It, 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 gets me, it gets me excited. It gets my brain excited. Anyways, Finn stumbles upon an opening in the sewer that is covered in orange saliva and features numerous candy people stuck to the walls. The candy people and Princess Bubblegum look awful and miserable. And to be honest, I would too if I was covered in somebody else's saliva and stuck to a wall. Jake then shows up and continues to believe that this entire fiasco is a surprise party until Finn intervenes and tries to make him understand the gravity of the situation. Once Finn knocks some sense into Jake, literally, the boys conclude that Jake's head injury caused him to lose his sanity, leading to the kidnapping of the candy people under subsequent confinement in the sewer. However, according to Peppermint Butler, that is far from the truth. If it wasn't obvious enough, that bastard did it. That guy over there, that goddamn deer did it. We as an audience are then greeted with one of the weirdest f scenes in Cartoon Network history. The deer removes his hooves, or whatever they're called, revealing that he has fingers, starts wiggling them around, which is just... Ugh. Grabs Peppermint Butler, licks or violates him until he's coated with... <coughs> I'm having a stroke over here trying to describe this. Until he is coated with orange saliva and sticks him back to the wall, which prompts Finn to kick the ever-living bejesus out of the deer. 
This entire episode is just f***ing nuts. Is this considered animal abuse, by the way? While doing so, Jake frees all of the candy people. Jake then unties the cinder blocks from his feet, which both perfectly hit the deer in the head, knocking him out. You know, fun fact, if this were real life, that deer would look like McSpaghetti right now. But this is a cartoon, so nothing grotesque pops out. The candy people then roll the deer's body into the sewer water. According to PB, the deer just wanted some sugar, but she wouldn't let him have any. Now, it's not explicitly stated that the deer was looking to get some with the princess, but it's like heavily implied by her. And uh, okay, that's enough for me. I'm leaving. And that was the last time we ever saw the deer. For now. Spoiler alert. So despite the deer being knocked unconscious and thrown into some poopy water and no one could hear you, that episode isn't the only time the deer makes a cameo. The deer also makes some minor appearances in the episodes Sons of Mars, Hero Heart as the Candy Stag, and Skyhooks 2. And the deer also makes a cameo on the title card of the episode Belly of the Beast. Oh, and the deer also appears in the episode Normal Man as a telescope. And this is confirmed to be the same stag according to a DVD commentary. And the deer is actually an enemy in the Adventure Time video game Explore the Dungeon because I don't know. If I ever wake up to a deer in my bedroom licking me, grabbing me with its fingers, and carrying me out into a hole in the ground in the middle of nowhere, I just want you all to know that I love each and every single one of you who was nice and doesn't elevate my anxiety. I'm being dead serious. This episode has put the fear of deer in my brain, and I will never not unsee the horrors of no one could hear you or that digit wiggling stag. Next time a group of deer appears in my backyard, I'm locking the doors, I'm closing the blinds, and I'm hiding in a corner with a cinder block. Okay, I'm just gonna keep it a buck with you guys. I love this episode. I know I threw around the words scary, terrifying, creepy, the around in this video and made it seem like I was truly petrified of the contents of this episode, but truthfully, I love it. I think this is definitely one of my favorite episodes of the series. The whole concept of the episode is just super unique to me, like a crazy deer kidnapping candy people because he couldn't do the hibbity dibbity with Princess Bubblegum is just insane. The atmosphere is unsettling and the background music really adds to that. I really appreciate the writers for thinking outside of the box on this one. I especially love how the question of how long Finn was unconscious for is open-ended, meaning that viewers can basically interpret the length of Finn's coma any way they want. Whether it was truly six months or six magical dog months or a few days or whatever. I very much enjoyed how the writers didn't rely so much on humor for this episode and instead focused more on just telling a story full of tension and suspense. I especially love the deer. I mean, that deer deserves a f***ing Oscar. In fact, I, I think the deer is my favorite character in the entire series because of how bizarre he is. And his motives. Like, I understand he wanted sugar from PB, but I feel like that doesn't fully explain why he kidnapped every single person in the Candy Kingdom and stuck them to a sewer wall and also why his saliva is orange. Is he just a mutant? I don't know, like, I feel like there's more behind why he decided to kidnap everybody. And the writers just don't elaborate on it any further. Can we please just get a Distant Lands 45 minute special that focuses on nothing but the deer? I know that will never happen in a million years, but that would just be so funny. I think my only real complaint with this episode was how only like five candy people were rescued at the end of the episode. I mean, obviously, it would be a complete pain in the ass to animate a bunch of characters on screen at once. Really, this is just a dumb nitpick for me. It doesn't really change my overall opinion. I still love this psychological thriller of an episode. If you're like me and you like Adventure Time, but just for some strange reason never got a chance to watch No One Could Hear You, definitely give it a watch. If you love Adventure Time and you've seen this episode dozens of times, watch it again. Do it right now. If you've never watched Adventure Time, well, I don't know if this episode is the perfect introduction to the series, but I think you should give the show a watch. And like I stated previously, I have a few other episodes that I would love to talk about for videos, so if you enjoyed this casual conversation about No One Can Hear You and you want more, let me know in the comments below. But hey, if you guys enjoyed today's video, do me a favor and leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new around here. Click the bell icon to be notified and whenever I upload a brand new video, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and join my Discord server. I'll links in the bio below. Have a great day everyone, and remember that deer are pretty scary.